You want to test it open your mouth? Yes, yes. It is good? لا ما اخترعوها هاي للاسف they didn't create technology yet. So which dish do you know that combines lentils, onions, eggplants, garlic, peppers, sour pomegranate, tahini, and water? Palestinians figure out a way to make combination dishes with our land's richest natural ingredients. For this episode, we'll be making romaniye, a very hearty dish made the Lidawi way with none other than Lulu Abura, famously known for her company's Lulu's Gourmet Crackers. Oh, and uh, we had a special guest on this episode. Om Shahid, Lulu's mother, joined us to share uh, how this Romania has been cooked since the days Palestine was under Ottoman rule. Enjoy the conversation and recipes our amazing Palestinian women have cooked up to not only keep our tummies full, let's be real, with these protein-rich dishes, uh, but also without using a single ounce of meat. Let's eat. So, Today, we're going to do Rumaniye. Rumaniye, as you may or may not know, is a typical Lidanwe dish. I didn't know that it was Lidanwe until my mom stepped in she, and she got really, really excited. She's like, Hada taban Lidanwe, you know? So I'm inviting my mom to come and cook with me. Amazing. So let's, yes, this is the moment. The real. So this is the grand chef, please. The grand chef. chef. <laughs> My mama. Merhaba. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Kifik. Hada Ahmed mama. So mama is from Lebanon, sa? Ah, this is the food, the food of the Palestinian, the food of the Palestinian, basically. And then this food is known for the Lebanese food. ومشهورة والكل بحبها وسائك يعني عبارة عن عدس بتنجان بصل توم فلفل إذا موجود الرمان الحامض بعصره بس إذا هون ما في عن الرمان الحامض بنستعمل له دبس الرمان لأنه هذا موجود متوفر هون في الأسواق. I love asking her why. That dish, you know. So there is a lot of um, reasons behind a dish. You know, it's not just because it's pretty, but it's um, social economical purposes behind it all. You know. So yama ahina, matan leish al akli hai. Zaman awal taban na kana kutwa fi al akli lah al hum wa dajaj. So a lot, of, a long time ago, a lot of people didn't couldn't afford meat or chicken. You know, couldn't consume that. كان يستعمل الأشياء مثلا من الأرض مثل البقوليات مثل الخضرة اللي طلعوها من الأرض. So most of the dishes were from like when people planted, mainly grains or what the land gave, like eggplant, you know, tomato, chukaman. Best. So also, more and more people, like you're saying, on Instagram and so many products and around the food culture as well. So much of Palestinian culture is embedded in the food. And I think seeing in the ether other people sharing their personal narratives, their personal stories, is kind of making it, like you're saying, we have nothing to lose. We've gotten to a point where, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's not be silenced. Like, I think um, our parents' generation, they silence, they stay silent. And um, I think we can use the power of social media to speak up. You know, like when I, for instance, started with the crackers, it was mainly just to start a means of providing. But then I said, no, wait a minute. I'm, I have a story to tell too. What's I, the story with the crackers for those who don't know? I mean, I know the story, but I don't know all the details. Why did you start making those crackers? So the crackers were just, um, I used to make zeta uh, zata sandwiches for my kids going to the mm, park. The best, the best. Right? I'm like, you know, they need to know what zata. If anything in the world, they need to know what zata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there's one thing to make you a good Palestinian, yeah. If you don't know what zata and the power of zata, then you're no good. 
So by the time we get to the park, they look like the shell. It was dead here, zatar in their hair. Like, yeah, Allah. <laughs> and I used to take a snack, you know, the um, goldfish, the snacks. And I was like, but this gotta be so bad for you. I gotta yeah. figure something that is a little healthier so I could be less guilty. And so I came across this um, crackers recipe and then I started playing with it and my mom was 100% full from board and butter. My dad in the country was like, should we take the heck you have that? Nobody's gonna yeah. buy. They should buy you one thing. I was like, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you know why they're fine? Because they eat zatar crackers. They need it. So the first sale I come and I show, you, I, I show it to him. I was, he's like, Shmin sell the cat. It was like $50. And I was like, minute crackers. <laughs> so then the rest is history. I couldn't stop making and, you know, playing with the recipe little by little, listening to what people I, like or don't like. I have to tell you when, you, when you, when I received the first batch, I was kind of surprised not just that they tasted so good because zata is hard oh, to make you. but it tasted healthy and there was less guilt even though i'm not your child eating them <laughs> i was like i don't feel so guilty plus this is part of my culture here you want one <laughs> let's get to business so what, what did we what do, do so can you re retract quickly what we did so far? So we're gonna do the mania, which is a lidade dish. Okay, typical from the lid. So my mom chopped the onion, one whole onion, like medium size. So hala, ante hatet el basal, ras basal. So one head of uh, onion, uh, medium size, um, with some oil, corn oil, mazola. 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 My mom likes cooking with mazola. Okay, then uh, we make it mushy, like slightly golden. No cold, no. Golden, Yanni. No, there's still mushy. Okay, so not golden. Scratch that. It's um, more, more like um, just until it mushes. Or when you start smelling the onion. Delicious. So now I can smell the onion, and she just rinsed a cup and a half. Can you set the other? You know we don't measure. Our mom don't two, measure. About, uh, two cups. About I'll two say cups. two cups of lentil. So my mom grinds her own seven spices. She makes her own seven spices. So my mom now just pour over three cups of water, like eight ounces. And the, yes, what you see here are hot pepper. And the reason why she doesn't open or chop them, it's because some, it might be too hot. It will give too much of a heat. And this is just to give enough heat without really, you know, hurting somebody. <laughs> so I'm gonna recap. It's lentil, some onion, medium size, uh, um, then um, she put some spices, her own, you know, my mom, she does her own here at, how, at home. It's uh, kusbara, cumin, then some seven spices, and salt, and she just also dropped two cubes of um, chicken stock. You may choose not to use that or a more organic um, alternative. And then she uh, put the water, and three uh, hot pepper, as you see. Mm. So now she's, um, for this dish, the manilla, she's cutting the, she's cutting the, the eggplant in cubes as such. One, two, three, four, five, six, medium size garlic. And she wants me to use the mortar. She's allowing me to use the mortar. <laughs> <laughs> By, by the way, you saw how many times you want... me out, right? I try to have yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom is the same. So even when you know how to cook, they kick you out. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I do know how to cook, but why would I bother with the mortar? I just don't like to do it. I 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 don't like to
I love the smell of garlic, don't you? Me too. I'm a garlic a fist, like a fiend. I could eat it all day. In fact, when I ordered delivery food, I even chopped my own garlic and added to it because I feel like it's like an antibiotic. Yeah. Well, I mean, my mom cooks millions of dishes and the ones that I've documented or the ones that I've understood the essence of, I have to say, I mean, we all know that food is sentimental, especially for Palestinians, Danny. The way we about everything is a bit intense, obviously, um, but food especially. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna put the eggplant chopped up in cubes. Okay, and we're doing that. It looks like it won't fit, but it does fit because you know the eggplant will then be mushy mm -hmm. so now i just tried the lentil the lentil is cooked and we're just waiting for the eggplant to cook be a little more mushy and then um we're almost there as you can see the lentil is cooked the eggplant is mushy <laughs> or cooked and um we're gonna add pomegranate molasses. Putting the molasses, we're gonna lower the heat to about three or one or two. So we lower the heat. Notice how she doesn't measure because that's old school. <laughs> old school don't measure. They just keep on pouring until they see that it looks good, tastes good. If it looks good, that means it tastes good, basically. That's the way, right, Mama? So that's the color that, that it needs to be from the dips the, man, the pomegranate, the pomegranate uh, molasses. So it turns a little reddish or brown. Um, the, that's the pepper. You want to slowly put the, the blend of uh, water and flour. That is used to thicken the the dish, huh? but you want to do it slowly so you want uh, crumble. So you leave it like for a good two, three minutes or five top, just until the um, the flour gets cooked with it. So now the, the garlic is turning gold golden she's using uh, dry coriander okay and you want to keep it turn off the, the heat on this and there you have it and For individual ones. So when it cools down, it will be like a porridge, right? It will be thick. And you can eat it with a spoon or bread. And I love you, Mama. Thank you. Yeah, look. It's a beautiful little dish that we made with my mom. So basically it's lentil, um, one small medium size onion, some couple like three or four garlic, minced. And what you do is, oh, an eggplant, you need one medium size eggplant, uh, cut in cubes. So you cook the lentil with some onion, uh, spices as you wish. And then you put in the eggplant mid process, then you, you add the uh, uh, pomegranate molasses and then you cook it all together just until the, the dish uh, carries on some of the flavor. And then you put a mixture of um, flour and water just to thicken and it turns it into porridge. She, the, the cook, to cook, it is, uh, looks like any art. It's an art for her. It is art for me. That's true. Mm -hmm. This is important for me. 
I grew uh, my home when I, before I married my mother, she loved to cook. And every time I go to the kitchen, so hard how she cook. And when I went to Brazil, uh, my mother-in-law, she, she loved to cook. I'm sure. So I live in the, my family, my family, my family of my husband, they love to cook, they love to eat at home. Do you, do you feel that it connects you to ayam zaman khalina nqul ayam al-'iz or your past life Ibda bitatbukh bitahess inna um bishabbak amal ayam zaman kana bidda ta'id al-ayam ayam zikriyan ana ana remember my family, uh, family of my husband, I will remember everything. Have a relation between the, this time and the... So every dish is different for you. Yani every dish reminds her on a certain this, incident, this, a memory. I remember, I remember my uh, oldest uh, brother. Memories in Romania. Yeah. So this dish reminds her of her older brother, when come on. He used to love it. This is the, 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 uh, his favorite dish. Favorite dish. Yalla, ladies, I want to thank you for teaching thank me. You so thank you so much. Thank you for this window. Nice to talk with you. Uh, thank you very for everything. And you know, we do all this for our moms, right? Like, um, we try to honor our parents through food, and uh, there is no louder expression than uh, a well uh, learned or pass down tradition, such as a beautiful dish like Romania, you know. So we do it to honor our ancestors, especially our moms that, you know, they transmit so much love in every dish and um, every presentation. You want to taste it, open your mouth. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is good? One sec. Atini <laughs> Lumi. لا ما اخترعوها هاي للاسف they didn't create technology yet. Um, I wish I could that? taste it, but you should taste it. How does it taste? Tell me. If you had to you. if you had to describe it each in one word, what would you okay. say? Mm. With bread, please. Mm. The, the way it's supposed to be done. Mm. One thing's missing, aren't you? Mish mafrud naklo khubze. I don't want to eat from Khumza, so I'm trying to stay away from Khumza, that's why. Yalla, chef is weird. Ummik, ma had do it, she's not going to taste it. Mmm, see that. Mmm. Look at her face, she loved it. She loves it. You know what's the best food? I love it. It's from the hands of a chef. Wait, wait, bring your mom in the camera. She's leaving the camera. I want her to describe the food. You know, what's the best? Food. It's from a chef that loves to eat what they've made. I hope we entertained you with food, a little bit of drama, <laughs> kids crying, <laughs> camera malfunction. A real beautiful Palestinian family. Thanks for welcoming us. So now us. you know where to come when you're in New York. I'm, hey, I'm going to be there soon, inshallah. I'll be there soon. Inshallah. Inshallah.